commence primary ignition. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. What a piece of junk. Enterprise, this is the captain. I got a bad feeling about this. It's all part of the plan. Engage. And welcome back to Podcast 2 for 1. My name is Donovan Thompson, and today I am with... Daniel Wingfield. <laughs> oh, were you expecting me to do something funny? No, that was that was kind of funny. Okay. Um, awesome. One thing of note is that I am not going to n- number the episodes going forward because I have noticed. We keep shooting ourselves in the goddamn <laughs> foot. I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> five of you. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. Yeah. We haven't discussed that, but I mean, it's, you know, Warren had pointed out right now, but like, and this is episode 50 something. Let's do that. Um, <laughs> Just it, look at the goddamn title. You don't. We're, yeah, the title will tell so you lazy. everything. Yeah, don't be so ex- lazy. exactly. Look down um, while you're driving. Yes. Um, anyway, if you haven't already, please subscribe below. Hit that like button. If you're on the podcast or like on a podcast service like iTunes or something, of course, head over to YouTube channel. It's where all the cool content's happening. True. We literally shot some stuff. Was it last weekend we shot? Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. Started yeah. So and it's and it was one of those things like in the moment where we're shooting, we're like, wow, this actually might be some good content that people will enjoy. That's true. We never feel that way. <laughs> Any other time, I know. I know. <laughs> right now, I'm thinking, well, this is this sucks, and yeah, no exactly. one will like it. But you know what? The internet demands sacrifice. It's true, and so we must present our sacrifice exactly. to the internet gods. Um, but anyway, we have um, things around the corner. I know. Again, we've been saying that forever, but I promise it's really, truly happening. Especially now that there's actually footage in the can. It's sexy. It's, it's sexy. It is sexy. Yeah. I showed. I've showed a couple people. Oh yeah, and they're oh, like, they're like, whoa, looks really. Have good. you shown Matt yet? Anything? Yeah, I showed I showed Matt. Well, I showed you guys at the same time, but I yeah. showed Matt and I showed Katie and I showed J J three. I showed. Oh really? Yeah, they were like, "Whoa, this looks really good." And they're cool. you know they didn't know what it was, but yeah, this awesome. I thought was cool looking. I think you'll like it too. Yeah. So, um, real quick, Daniel, what have you been watching? What have you been playing? What have I been watching? What have I been playing? I've been watching a lot of YouTube at night. It's weird. Um, Dude, YouTube's so good, man. It, it is, and I'm I've finding out that like. There are certain channels, and I want to shout it out to, to the five people listening. Racevich. I know I've, I've, I've showed it to you. Can you spell that? or It's R-A-Y-C-E-V-I-C-H. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is actually, it, it, the, the guy's name is Lucas Racevich. He's a Canadian guy. He started on a kind of Canadian um, gaming news kind of journalism type thing. And then I think COG. COG was what he was on originally. I don't remember. COG is in like the coalition COG, like for Gears of War? No, 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 no. It's some kind of publication in oh, Canada okay. or, or some kind of gotcha, like journalism, gotcha. whatever. Um, but he, yeah, he started and what he got famous were for the uh, the years later series. So Halo 3, Halo 1, yeah. 14 years later, yeah. Halo 2, 14 years later, Halo 3. And he's continued that through all of them, except ODST and Reach, which is fine. Um, but man, his content, I mean, I feel like I am learning so much just listening, whether it's history, whether it's just insight into game design. Like, he's he really, he breaks down video games at an academic level. Like, I really feel like his scripts could pass in, like, classes. Like, what he's right. basically reading, the way he, I mean, he justifies everything. If he's going to say a statement, he's going to back it up with evidence or, or something. That's cool. But also injects... You know, humor and references to other YouTube kind of like zeitgeist lessons too. from a screenplay, but for games or kind of like uh, a lot of it, yeah. Because a lot of his years later will be let's talk about pre production, what every, happened, it, who got in an argument yeah. with who, why did Sega want this people to do this and they wanted to do that, and then it got delayed again. And he goes through all the journey, he goes to like, and this is what they showed at E3 2006, and you get to kind of relive because, like, that's even like with Halo 3, it's or like. For instance, with Halo 2, there's the infamous Halo, I guess it was 2003 E3 presentation that was, I mean, the presentation started with Sergeant Johnson saying, this ain't no smoke and mirrors bullshit. And it was a smoke and mirrors bullshit presentation. <laughs> and like, that was a, some controversy around it because they're like, yeah, this is just gameplay. And they they had a guy up there like as if he was just playing it and they were watching it. It ended up being like pre-recorded or something. So he wasn't uh, actually playing so it? So he wasn't actually playing it. Yeah. Wow. And it was just a big hubbub that. over it. Uh, and it was also because like the demo for Halo Two and what Halo Two was are like very, I probably very honestly different, didn't different. watch the Microsoft conference. I was twelve. I didn't know what E three was. I, I was plugged in the E three and stuff then, but I, I don't. Wasn't. I wasn't for micro. I was Sony Pony sure, back sure. then. You know? uh, but man, his videos are just great. I love them. That's I highly cool. recommend it. I watch his videos about games I never played. You know what I mean? Like, and I enjoy it. That's fun but because but you, I feel like I'm learning about games, and, and I, you get context about why people are excited about it and why they have nostalgia for it. Hundred percent. No, I, I do feel like I understand 
the audiences for games that I don't necessarily connect to. Yeah. And that's, it's just fun. He's, he's got a great voice. that's just nice to listen to that nice kind of silky bravado that just sounds good. Yeah. Um, I think I, I watched, um, his halo four and five. Yeah. I think that's what yeah. I watched. Sure. Those are great. Yeah. Uh, he does them on the mass effect trilogy. I know you're a big mass effect Ooh, fan. Yes, I'd man. recommend that. It's yeah. a very, it's, he kind of does, he does Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, but it's kind of all one big thesis that he's trying to make about Mass Effect that's really interesting. Yeah. And I'd, be one, I'd wonder what your reaction to it was. I won't spoil it. Uh, so yeah, Race of Edge, highly recommend. Great content. I, again, I get home at night. And I'm like, I want to watch something, but I don't like have a show. Yeah. Like I've been watching The Boys, but I, I've, got, I've got an episode ready to roll. I just don't like running out of episodes. <laughs> So I well, me, like having yeah, me and Katie are we we're that's one thing we're watching is the boys. I think we're like at five episodes in or four. Yeah, I think episodes. I just watched the sixth. So I, I think, think this Friday tomorrow is the eighth. <laughs> oh, the, the podcast eighth. Yeah, tomorrow's the last episode of the season. There's only eight episodes. It's the finale. Yeah, that's disappointing. Yeah, so Th- this felt like a really short season. Yeah, I think, really sh- I think there's only eight last season too. Maybe yeah. So there was it's the same amount of number. You could be right, but it just so, yeah. but yeah. So we're we're watching that too. Yeah, I'm really loving it. It's good. I just I just don't want drip feed. <laughs> I just want to finish it. Yeah. If I've got it, I mean, they're, they're, the episodes have been good about making you want to watch the next one like immediately. Yeah. They're they, good cliffhangers. They are good about it. Uh, they're smart. It's a bingey show that won't let you binge it. That's my issue. You made a well, binge show and you can't We've been spoiled it. by a lot of different things. I don't things. care. I like being spoiled and I want it to stay that way. Uh, so that, I've been watching a lot of YouTube, been playing some Star Wars Squadrons. Man, I, I, I want uh, this game. It is a fantastically made game. I would say this. It is not. It's it. They do the basics right, right? The the simulation space flight is the best we've ever had as far as the cockpit just looks breathtaking. I mean, you feel like you're like it, it just everything about it just engrosses you in Star Wars. When you up the throttle, you actually up the throttle when you know and again my favorite thing might be is that every blinking light or or little readout that you would typically be in a simulation that just means nothing or it's just like a video every one of those means something and you can actually just turn off the in-game ui and fly by those readouts and it's not that hard i mean i I think looking at that i don't think like well fuck you have to be like a nerd to do that it's like no i mean that's that seems pretty reasonable. And honestly, if you think about it, they're kind of at the bottom of the screen. It's basically an on-screen UI anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, but man, the speed, like you feel fast. You feel like you're zipping in and out. And and the different air, the different ships feel fast. Uh, like, like, or di- feel like different. Like the A-Wing is this like barely has any shields or any armor, but like, man, it just zips. It's just all over the place. Same with the TIE Interceptor. Those are great. The X-Wing and the name TIE Fighter are kind of your jack of all trades. And then you've got bombers. You've got these other things. But the story so far, I haven't finished it, is good. I'm looking forward to keeping going with that. The multiplayer, though, I just think is very, very well made. This It feels like this game was built in a way that it can just last. I mean, they don't really have to add a lot else to have a solid community around this game forever mm-hmm. i think just because they've built such a balanced simulation spaceship fighter but even in the way you can customize right so almost every element of your ship is customizable right so the x-wing starts out you've got your laser you know your whack, 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 your little red laser cannons <laughs> yeah um like they go whack, whack, whack. Yeah. i love the x-wing laser <laughs> sound um at least they did in the original trilogy uh so and then you've got a missile where you can lock on and you know send a missile that homing's on them. And then you've got like a repair droid. And then you've got your basic engines. All of that can be customized. So you, you obviously have to unlock stuff. There's no in-game currency. There's no in microtransactions. This is all just... And basically every level you rank up, you get to unlock a new extra like option on one of your ships. But they're great. So let's say, for instance, I like my X-Wing, but I, wanna, but I can suit it up. So I'm going to make the engine faster. But what that's also going to do, everything you do has a, 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 a plus and a minus. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I want faster engines, but that also decreases my hull integrity by 10%. Okay, more we'll trade off. Or I want, I, I'm going to have two different kinds of missiles, but no repair droid. But now I've got way more firepower. And maybe my, maybe my thought is, well, I know I don't survive long anyway. I just want to do as much damage in the time I'm on the map as possible. You can uh, swap out lasers, like normal like lasers that you shoot for... Uh, 
auto aim lasers, but they do less damage. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's these things that you can I wanna, do. I want to like, get. I want to dive into. It's it. not. There is not a best ship. There is not a best build. There's variety of builds of every ship that can work for anybody, and that's what's I think will give this game the legs, is because then you start creating these communities about around the metas because metas always pop up in this. Eventually there will be probably a TIE fighter meta where most of the people use a similar build because they found it works in these situations. But what's fun is it's always evolving. You may have that and then eventually someone will figure out, oh, I found a, a different build here that's great counter to that meta. And then you get a new meta going. And so like you really build a community around a well-balanced multiplayer experience with in-depth, well thought out customization. Mm -hmm. It's not just, it's not like Call of Duty where like, well, I unlocked a level and now I get the better sniper rifle. It doesn't happen. You, you want to unlock a weapon? Sure, but there's a pro and a con. It's not just better. It may work better for you and how you play and that's what you have to think about. Right. But it's not just a, well, upgrade to better kind of thing. And I love it. I, I highly recommend Squadrons if you have, honestly, if you just have no Star Wars nostalgia, the, uh, the campaign is good and I think might could be worth, especially for 40 bucks, a nice, fun Star Wars campaign. Uh, but if you are interested in space flight, space drama, I played those old A-Wing, sorry, X-Wing and TIE Fighter games back on the PC back in like the 90s. My dad played all those. I played them all after him. And I love them. So I, I already have a, a bit of a foundation for this genre, to be fair. Uh, my hope is this, this, this game allows other people to realize this is a fucking awesome genre that wasn't developed enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you're, like the last time we had a game like this was one of the Rogue Squadrons, but those were very arcadey. Those were those right. were meant to be fun arcadey, blow shit up, move on. This game feels like a tactical, strategic. The the skill ceiling is incredibly high. It's a game that you can jump in and it's pretty easy to get the hang of. But if you want to, you can get real de in depth, especially in terms of, sh oh, I'm going to shift my power to my shields now because someone's on my ass. And then I'm going to shift my shields to my rear. So I've got all my shield power in my rear and I don't have like, any shields up front because I've got somebody on my ass. And then I'm going to try to pull a move here to get around him because he keeps getting on my ass. Or I'll ask one of my teammates if I'm on mic, hey, come get this guy off me and that works and it's that rear you feel like you're in a squadron you feel like you're yeah it just it just feels so true to the world that it it's again i've said this to you it's my 12 year old's wet dream of like a star wars game because right you put the you put the the, the headphones on you got your controller and you just look at that tv and you can just get lost in that you're a pilot in an x-wing and that's just, that's one of my fancies. Yeah, that's cool. yeah that's cool. it's great. Highly recommend. I know that's I rambled cool. a long time about that, but okay. what have you been playing and watching? Um, <clears throat> watching. Um, I, well, I'm almost done with Shit's Creek. I think after Fantastic show. after the in, them sweeping at the Emmys, um, I just turned it on and I had no ambition or interest in sure. watching it. Sure. And then after that first episode, I was like, well, maybe another. You know, and it's, sure. they're so small and 20 minute digestible chunks that you yeah. can burn through a whole season. And they're only 13 episodes a season. Yeah. A whole season in like an afternoon if you really were trying. It's not hard. Yeah. Um, so I'm almost done with season um, five, I believe. And then season six Just has, dropped. has dropped. Yeah. They dropped so. it like a few days early. Yeah. Oh, they did. last week. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I haven't watched that. I mean, that's the only season I haven't watched. I've actually watched the first four, I think, all the way twice. The fifth wow. one la launched, I think, last year on Netflix. Well, okay. But uh, yeah, I agree. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I'm loving it. So and well written. The of course, we, we mentioned earlier The Boys. <laughs> We're almost done with season two on that. Mm. Um, I've been dribbling West Wing here and there, just, yeah. you know, and yeah. like just doing that. I've been watching a lot of YouTube. I watch a lot of news, watch all the debates. I mean, I, I'm not brave enough. You know, I, I, I intentionally find things to do. I mean, last night we <laughs> watched, I watched the VP debate, and, um, you know, that was, you know, you want to know our political opinions? Tough fucking luck. Yeah, yeah. You, you won't. Um, we, don't, we don't do that here on this channel. But now, I, I saw a post by Katie on Facebook. Sure. And it mentioned Cobra Kai and bonsai trees. Have you guys got, gotten back into the show yet or really started it again? No, we haven't yet. I mean, I'm kind of torn Damn. because me and Matt started it X1, oh, sure. you know, so many sure. years ago. And sure. like, we're trying to, I want to watch it with him, but also I'm getting to a point where it's like either. How long are you going to wait? Either me and him need to really sit down and watch it right. or. Or, or I'm gonna have to, you know, we'll have that. We'll have me and him. We'll have a conversation. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm not even sure. I've mentioned it on the show, but man, Cobra Kai. Oh, I mean, I, I know I'm gonna show. 
what I've seen and then even like the trailers I've seen of right. it and people talking about it, right. it's like it's made for me. And again, it's you know? this a classic example. This is how you bring back old franchises. Mm-hmm. This is how you revisit these nostalgic movies yeah. in meaningful ways that you you don't just rehash the story I just, again. I it's just not just it was a about cool thing. It's not just about, you know, Daniel LaRusso's son that ends up basically doing the same plot as Karate Kid right. One or some bullshit. You know, it, it's thought out. It's intelligent. And yeah. It takes it takes the sides of characters you wouldn't have expected it to take. I mean that's the premise of the show. Yeah. Man. I'm excited to I to recommend dig, it to dig to back any, into to anyone. It. To anyone. Um I try to think other watching things. I can't really think of it right now. But I'll say this. I have went through um, Super Mario 3D All Stars. Yeah, we were going to do a review on it, but many other things sure. popped up. But um, basically, it's three, still Mario. It's still Mario, and you know I had some reservations about. Um, oh, they didn't really upgrade anything, whatever. Sure. But they sure. they kind of did actually. There's actually like some pretty good graphic uh, graphical updates. Okay, for sixty for all three of them, mainly for sixty four and Sunshine. Well, Sunshine was already HD though for Wii U. No, Sunshine's never been. It's never played beyond GameCube. Really? Yeah. I they made us no, they did an the, HD the, Sunshine. No, they didn't. No, 64, I promise you they didn't. 64 did come on the Wii in like a in a in a um uh like the whatever their online store was and it was also even less quality than the original game. The Wii the Wii version was. Um but to be to, anyway, the the Super Mario 64 it's still in four three aspect ratio. They didn't extend it to widescreen like they did um Sunshine, which is we'll get to in a second. But 64, it's an amazing game. I mean, like, it's whenever you're playing it, it's still like, man, this is just holds up. It holds up, man. Mm. And it's it's one thing you got to give them credit for. They only do one main lane Mario game right. every generation, besides Galaxy 2 being the exception. And um, and it's the reason why is because they <laughs> they really want to either have the technology to kind of advance it, or B, they put so much time and energy and effort, they're like, maybe we need to take a break for a minute. I mean, um, it's just money. <laughs> it, it, just, maybe, but I mean, the I, fact I th- that they're cutting it off on March, whatever. No, I'm talking first. about just them. Re- and right now, I'm talking about them releasing a a standalone solo Mario game per generation, like taking a break oh, that way. They well, only, but they, no, they've only they did 64 for for 64. Yeah. They did Sunshine for GameCube, right? And they did Galaxy? Galaxy One and Galaxy Two for Wii, which is different. They didn't do any for the Wii U. They did well. They kind of cha- they did that. Super Mario 3D World. That doesn't shit, count. Right? We're but talking, that, we're, that, that they were trying to make it count. But we're we're talking. Nah, but no one counts that. We're talking about well, no, um, solo do. single player yeah. 3D platform games, yeah. and then yet Odyssey and and the current Switch generation. Um, Which you've got to think. I mean, you know, there's lots of rumors about a new Switch coming, beginning of Switch, the year, Pro, Switch Pro, yeah. and, and updated things. There, there's a rumor going around about Nintendo asking developers to prepare for H for 4K, which to me sounds. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll see. Yeah, more like we'll see. I believe when I see it. Yeah, we'll um, see. you don't even do HD that well, so can <laughs> say 4K. I'm like you, you, you can barely get the 1080 when it's fucking docked. It's at like 940 half the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. Let, let's learn. Let's learn to ride our bike before we drive a car, Nintendo. Uh, but all that to say is, it feels like. It feels like we should get another Mario this generation. Like it, feels I really like, feel like we're going to get an Odyssey two announcement next year. Well, and also what's making me think that is we got we're getting Breath of the Wild. Too. That's and that's kind of where and I'm that's very. At. I mean, this is the first time since Majora's Mask. I think there's been a direct Zelda sequel, and even Majora's Mask was very. They didn't. They didn't like play into that. As it being a, a sequel to Ocarina of Time. Like right. you could play that and never know if sure. Ocarina of Time existed. And Much it's a darker, that, weirder game. It's not based on the story of Ocarina. It's yeah. It is what Link does canonically right afterwards. But a Breath of the Wild 2 feels that that feels like a change of direction Nintendo's basically done on their games before. My hope is so my big hope is that they spent so much time on Breath of the Wild One that they all they could do was make a great world and engine, and they didn't have time to make the story or world interesting because that was my kind of big complaint. Is like the physics physics are amazing. I love that I can climb anything. I love how rain works and you know the electricity and static. That's great. But I hate that my weapons break. I, I hate it because it means I never use my good weapons. I'm always saving them, and I just never get around to them because right. I'm always like. That's just my inventory management in any RPG. I can't help it. It's just what it is. Nintendo, you can't break me. It's just how I am. So give me, and even the Master Sword doesn't, it doesn't break, but it has to recharge for 10 minutes once you've used it. Blah, blah, blah. Um, 
So fix that and give me actual dungeons and actual side quests with characters. Like that to me is a big standout for Ocarina of Time. It's not just the the, the fire temple and the and the forest temple and the water temple and how the music, all that's amazing. But it's all these side things you could do. It's it's like the big iron big Goron sword that you could go that required you to go basically every corner of the map and there was a time limit on it and the, the, the game didn't signpost it. You had to really figure it out and you know, all this kind of stuff or there was hidden puzzles in like the lost woods. Um, there was just to me a lot more interesting side characters and things going on. I hope that what they're doing with Breath of the Wild 2 is saying, great, we've got this world, we've got this engine built. Now let's make it way more interesting inside because they don't have to redo the world. I mean, Surely they're going to use the same base map and just change some geography or something, you know? Sure. Um, So that, to me, the fact that they're doing that, that they're basically saying, yeah, we're reusing assets for a sequel. It feels like that that we're not far away from doing that with Mario. Yeah, I can see it. I mean, there's precedent with Galaxy 2. That's true. Which, which again, was kind of a a nominally. It's never happened before. But it was also, I mean, it's kind of a similar situation to Breath of the Wild because... Galaxy 1 was a giant innovation for the series. Yeah. And then Galaxy 2 was them perfecting that. Inter- like, now that right. they have the innovation down, we perfect the levels and we make how you use it better. Yeah. So you've got to think a lot of time was just yeah. I mean, spent getting Personally, to I like Galaxy on one. 1 a little better. I feel like it's a bigger, more fuller game, actually. But um, just real quick, Sunshine. So 64 is my, I consider it my favorite game of all time just because of, yeah. I think it's just, I love beating Bowser at the end. The only thing they did change sure. is, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they changed uh, when you defeat Bowser three times. Every time he used to say "so long, to Bowser," and Which it sounds, sounds like, like so long, so long gay gay Bowser. It's classic. Yeah, classic. and like Come you on. know, it's one of those things. Like as a kid, like I didn't think anything about it. I just thought he was just saying "so long, to Bowser," you know. But then, like now, oh, really, you never heard the the gay Bowser. No, was I was a pretty you know innocent like, of course, yeah, yeah pristine, virgin, pr- virgin pr- kid, yeah, like perfect, virgin, virgin yes. brain, you know. But like. <laughs> Now when I'm playing it, he's like, "What do you do? What, what's your what's the status of your brain now? Like, like, like dirty whore, demon, or some shit?" But it's a <laughs> dirty whore, yeah, the maybe. god of, of of sex, yeah, of there, evil sex. There you go. That's it. The god of evil <laughs> sex, evil demonic sex, <laughs> and sex like evil sex isn't like you know bad things happening, like you know rape. Evil sex is like. Sure, it's sex, but you're laughing maniacally while you sure. do it. I'm or... screaming things like fatality during it. Yeah, <laughs> sir. Yeah. So anyway, um, but now he says okay, bye bye, so. and it's just kind of that's a small tweak. That's my only complaint. With other than that, sure. it, it looks better. It, you know, honestly, the controls feel almost like they're too precise because I felt like he was just like mm. too, almost like he had no lag or imperfection it's just like one to one and i was just like it almost made things a little more difficult in some ways um but i tore through that thing so quick because i knew where things at sure i've done it a million times sunshine is actually they extended it to widescreen they upscaled it did, to, yeah. to, to hd and then um which is nice. they redrawn the assets on like all of them like on terms of like the the like your counters and like your star oh, really? counts are actually redrawn um like sprites or whatever that's cool so that's, that's nice awesome. to kind of keep up with the game engine. yeah um, Sunshine, you know, it, it didn't get a lot of credit back in the day, and, and it's kind of a running um, theme throughout the game community. It's kind of the underdog Mario. Game. It is, but like it's 3D Mario. it's actually it's a playing it. You're like, wow, there's if a game come out today that was like this, it would be like ten out of ten because like no one can do platformers like Mario. Like it's just it's, they're almost a different level compared to some places. I always thought Mario Sunshine as a kid with a GameCube and friends with the GameCube. So GameCube was a big generation for me. Um, I always thought Sunshine looked so fun, like the art style. It was just yeah, so bright really cool. and colorful and kind of happy. That I, that was the biggest reason I had interest for it. Was just man, I like the visuals, yeah. and it just make it seems like a kind of most peaceful game to like live it in. That is, world. I mean, it's like pretty it's a paradise. World. The only thing I would complain about it is like art wise is that um, sixty four feels like every level or world is like unique and different, mm. and Sunshine it's all you know, tropical island themed and right. like it kind of almost blends together a lot of the time. Every level doesn't really feel unique. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, that's the only yeah. thing I would complain about now. The king here is galaxy. It always has been probably might be right. always will be. Right. I still don't think that it's been topped yet, even though I, I do really enjoy galaxy too. And I, I think Odyssey is amazing. 
I do. You still think Galaxy is number one for you? I still think Galaxy. It's not my it, 64 is my just blanket favorite, just so I can have, I can slot that in there and be but you safe. You got to say my, nostalgia is a big factor. It, it is the factor, but Galaxy is the sure. best Mario game of all time. Um, so I, the Mario I, game. I know that's a, that, the, that is a a popular opinion. You're yeah. not alone in that. He runs at 60 frames per second. It's On the H- Switch? Yeah, he's HD. And okay, no, 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 no. yeah, and um, I think he ran at sixty on the on the Wii though. That's the that's the interesting thing. Does that blow your mind? I guess that game is not that graph. I guess they it's found not. a way to really optimize. Yeah. That that is something I always feel like Nintendo finds ways to optimize their games better than anybody yeah. because they run on hardware that <laughs> shouldn't be able to run on. Right, you know what I mean. Um, but just the level design, even using the Switch for like the motion controls for the the Wii back the Wii mode back in the day. It Ugh. just it just feels good, Niners. and the way they use gravity and level design, it's just one of those things. Like, how do you top this? And I still don't think they have. Um, I think, granted, Odyssey is. You've played Odyssey with Reese, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. In fact, I need to get back to you. I think we. I actually got to World Three or Four. I think. I think I got to like. There's the, like twelve. There's I think I got to the one right before Donk City. Yeah, Donk Andrew? City is cool. At the end, that I, that was kind of what I was trying to get to at least because that's I know that's kind of the the iconic. One of the iconic things yeah, about the game. The end of that level is like I it's kind of worth it's worth the, or whatever, yeah, yeah it's yeah. worth the price of admission. Yeah. Anyway, that's what I've been watching. That's what I've been playing. Um, I do have a, qu- a real quick and let's do. It, let's spend a small amount of time on that before we get to our main topic of the day, mm. which you don't mm-hmm. know about that. I is. don't. Oh, I don't our know main. So anyway, real quick, we're about roughly a month away from the Series X. Hell yeah, we are. And we both have one pre-ordered. Hell yeah, I just I still have two. I, I, I'm trying to see if my brother wants it. See, like, I, I end up. Taking the other pre we're a bunch of assholes. We have we felt that to a piece. No, that is not an <laughs> asshole. You know what it is? If I hadn't got an Amazon one first, I probably would have gotten one. But I got an Amazon one first, and I didn't trust yeah. that fucker. And we got the email. Like, yeah, hey, you're probably not. And we all knew we were going to get that same email that PlayStation owners got, right? Sure. Um, but yeah, the, the main, the only, really, the only reason I went with another pre-order is because I got Amazon, and I was like, I don't trust Amazon. And I remember there was some issues even. Was it the, maybe the beginning of last generation, or maybe even like the Xbox ser- the Series X slash PS4? There being some like bad One delivery X. issues with Amazon. I feel like I remember that. Maybe, maybe I don't remember. remember. I don't. Remember, I don't remember that much about like the like people getting their. I got one for Christmas. And, I didn't get one on launch day. So gotcha. yeah. I, I feel like it was like from what I remember, and this is very fuzzy. Like it was like people getting the console like two or three weeks. Yeah, to I mean, a month it, after, it and like, or them not getting it all. I mean, there's or been basically Amazon saying, "Hey, we've lost it." Or yeah, there's been a lot of reporting that you might not. We, yeah, you might have to wait till 2021. There's been a lot of that, or even fact, I think I saw someone on Reddit say that if you look on Amazon, you can always see like the estimated delivery date, and theirs was like March 21. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, yeah. That, that means quarter and end of quarter one. That's what that means. <laughs> right, yeah. right. No, yeah. that's right. I mean, that means that 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 box probably isn't getting made until twenty twenty one, like manufactured potentially. That's weird. Um, I wonder. If I, that, I wonder how that. I, I made that up. I don't. Know I wonder how that works. Yeah. Um, but so we both have one, and also I just want to point out, I probably would have got a PS five first if I could have got the pre order. Like sure. I probably would have, just because I I do yeah. really want to play. Like Spider Man Remastered alone is like I'm. Was kind of upset about the face change that we, we haven't talked about in here, but like they actually changes yeah, the whole face. Yeah, I, I saw that. I would look a lot more like Tom Holland. It did, but like it was one of those things when I first played it, I would thought his look was like, you don't, you look kind of weird. Like you don't look like Peter Parker. But then I got used to it. By, I got used to it. By, by the end of it, I was I like, this it. is this universe of Peter but Parker. I, but I, I do feel like he looked older than what, 23 or 22 he's supposed to be. He does. And now the new one looks way younger. Way younger. But way he looks younger. almost like as old as Miles does, which is kind of weird because yeah. you feel like that's the mentor. To my, anyway, um, I, I that's why I want to play the PS5. But my question is, and let's keep this let's keep this shorter than what we've been doing today. <laughs> um, my question is, what is your first game you're going to play on your Series X? It's a great question, and I've really I've I've thought about it pretty in depth. Um, <laughs> so I I do have FIFA 21, and I know there's I, I don't like EA, and I don't like the the shit they usually piss out uh, in terms of quality and all that shit. But usually their games look good, and I know that FIFA 21 has a free update, so that's definitely on the possible lo- possibility list. Uh, it's got to be games that have. That have been given. And it's funny you said that, that because, like, I, you know, I'm not a sports guy. Yeah. But I was like, man, I want to get 2K21 just so I can Basketball? play. Basketball? 
just so I can see it. Because I saw the PS5. Yeah, yeah, the trailer. They and know. I was like, wooey, that looks yeah. good. Right. And so I think that's, I mean, I've already, I already have it bought. So I don't have to do anything. It just updates, upgrades automatically. So that's that's an option. Um, Valhalla, if I get it at launch. But I have I need to confirm if they have, if they're going to have next gen upgrades at launch. I can't remember if that's going to come later. You know, as far as the as far as developer created next gen upgrades. No, I think are they going to have that at launch? I can't remember. Yeah, because there is an optimized for Series X label on Valhalla Box, which means okay. that there is an yeah. upgraded version. No, that makes it. sense. So that that could be an option. I mean, the, the Assassin Creed games have been gorgeous lately. I mean, Origins and Odyssey is they're both very very pretty games. Right. The lighting in them this is, is great. I'd put the lighting of uh, of Orig- or Odyssey up there with even potentially Red Dead at times. Uh, eh, no, I walk that back. Never mind. Um, but yeah, I think Valhalla, FIFA 21. I mean, that's kind of my only options that I can think about right now. Other than because here's the thing: I don't want to play a last gen game that just has like the series or the Xbox One X upgrades automatically sure. applied or something. Like I want it to be a next gen game with Series X enhancement. So, like I said, I've got FIFA one in hand. I might try and get Valhalla if that looks interesting enough to me. Um, You're just kind of waiting for that Cyberpunk to drop, though, but right? See, but Cyberpunk does is not dropping with. Next yeah, but it was, it, but it should still have some time. It will still be 4K, not for Series right? X. Oh, I'm sure it'll be 4K because I mean, they had that for Xbox One X. Exactly. So I'm sure it'll still be 4K. I'm sure it'll be like 60. It is still gonna be gorgeous. But I think you're probably still going to see a big jump from when and the load the times will probably upgrades. better. I mean, on the Series X, that or, kind of yeah. St- that Cyberpunk is the game that's going to push the performance, in my opinion. That's that's going to be, I think, a big benchmark for how much can this thing like do? Because if Cyber, I mean, again, Witcher Three had ridiculous load times. Oh my god, it took you like two minutes to get to the main menu, and then it took you another know, three minutes to load into wherever you were. I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. It was long as shit. Right. And even like going to different regions on the map. So, and, and my, expectation, my expectations are high. I mean, I'm expecting Cyberpunk to look gorgeous, like perfect frame rate, and I want like 30 second load times or less. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think that's possible, especially because they really built it for Gen 7. And we're getting the benefit of it coming out right after the release of Gen 8. But like you would think that since it was built for us slower machines, that this, you know, the Series X should just play like butter. Yeah, hopefully. You know. So um to answer the Moan question, yeah. I think uh I, of course Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War comes out, I think two days That's after another, yeah. after I think launch. The 13th. It comes out the day so, after PS5. So three days yeah. after. So it's like I, that's like three days there. I have to wait to get that game. Um, I've already pre-ordered it and all that good stuff, but I, I bet if you buy the, like the stupid edition, you can play it three days early. That's how I'm I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. Works. I didn't buy the stupid edition, so uh, yeah. I got the regular optim. I got the Series X no, but optimized if you get, like, the version. Champion, uh, ultimate. The, whatever it's seventy. Version it's costs. it's seventy bucks. What version I bought was the Series X version. Oh, they're they're upcharging for that, aren't they? Yeah, ten dollars. But usually you can get like a ninety dollar version, a like hundred dollar version, and usually those let you play the game like three or four days early. Yeah, I'm not doing it's that. just stupid. I'm not stupid. Doing that. I think it's that's for only digital, also I believe. Like you can play it digitally early. You can't actually get a physical copy of it early. That's true. Yeah. I'm, so that's, which I'm is out. they want you to they want you to buy digital. So yeah, it makes more money. Yeah. Um, but I think maybe oh, I might play like Gears Five. Because it'll be 4K, 60 frames per, 120 frames per second. Sorry, and I, I think they've, <laughs> which is crazy talking about that. No, I mean that that could be a great. I mean that, in my opinion, there's a lot of late gen games that will blow our minds on the Series X. Right, I think that's going to happen. Um, I might even try booting up Witcher Three and seeing that because I bet it would be like stupid fast. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. there's games. I mean, Red Dead Redemption. That's a game that's high on the list too, to be honest, because that's a game that has takes you about five, six minutes to load into the game, getting past the menus and loading in. It's ridiculous. So for one that, but also I, I want to see what that game looks like at 60 FPS with yeah. 4k. Like that, that is really like, yeah, that, that, that came out probably next year, that upgrade, the 4k. Oh no, I, I, but I, th- I think even just seeing, I mean, I've seen what it looks like with people with, ridiculous PCs running that game at max settings and it's stupid stupidly good looking 
Really? You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I'm hoping that the Series X can get close to matching that just out the box. I'm sure it can. So, um, One little cool thing, small segue before we get into more, more topic-based stuff. Um, did you see today where the Mortal Kombat 11 announced for their Season 2 Fighter Pass? Who the... The main I saw the DLC. announced. I don't remember who it was. It's Rambo. Yeah, that's right. That's I, did, so I do cool. remember seeing all the artwork. Yeah, and so they announced that along with like okay, the final version of the game, right? So you get sure. all the DLC, you get the um, aftermath expansion, which is like a, another four hours of campaign, um, and then you get the main campaign, and then now also it's like the Xbox Series X and PS5 versions, and you get those for free if you already own the game. See, that's how you do it. Yeah, and then, of course, if you don't, then you can buy those versions, the disc versions. It's new packaging, new everything. I don't know the price of that's it. Cool. I'm assuming are you, it's probably 60 bucks. You, you already have this game? I don't already have it, actually. Is this, does this make it a must-buy for you? It yeah. does, because... You're, I mean, you're a Stallone guy. Oh, well, yeah. Well, you know, another DLC character is Spawn. Right, yeah, I do. Another I do DLC that. character is the Terminator. I mean, they made this game for you. They did. And the only downside the game has, the only downside is that the Terminator's not voiced by Arnold. It's from Arnold Impersonator, and it is not oh, good. That's yeah. Now the Stallone that is a the, letdown. The Rambo one sounds like Stallone, so I'm hoping they've contacted Arnold and said, "Hey, it's Stallone easy, did this." Probably an easier voice to mimic. I think it's actually Stallone. Oh, it's actually that's Stallone. what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. that's I don't know that for sure, but it sounds like that's cool. No, you can tell Arnold. It's not Arnold. See, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. Arnold just yeah. did the, his voice for the Dutch character again for Predator Hunting Grounds. He come back for that. Which is a big deal for me, and I haven't played that and he game was, yet. He voiced it. He actually voiced it, and he didn't do the Mortal Kombat one. I mean, so I'm just very confused. I think Mortal Kombat has more money than whoever's making it. It has a hundred percent more money. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that game's an amazing game, and I'm looking yeah, forward to see it run on 4K. Who's Mortal Kombat? Com- Cop- Cap- Capcom. Nether Realms. Nether Realms. Yeah, it's okay. Nether Realms. Which Capcom is? Which Warner, Warner Brothers owns Nether Realms? Okay, that's that's right. I remember them yeah. being talked about at yeah. that WB sale. So. Okay, cool. So game stuff. We're done with game stuff. Real quick, I kind of just do a quick update on some movie stuff before we get to the main topic. Oh, we're still on the main topic. Okay. This, this, is, this is like, this is, this is, we're getting into the realm now. Yeah. Real quick, just some COVID updates for everybody. Of course. James Bond has been pushed back from November yeah. to all the way to March now. All the movies have been pushed back. That's the update. We don't know no yet. No movies for years. Sure, yeah. And then Jurassic World Dominion has also yeah. been pushed back because they just got shut down again for two more weeks. They have three weeks left of shooting. So they just got shut down, and they are now releasing in 2022 in summertime. Um, Same which, with the Batman. Huh? The Batman got pushed back. Batman, I was saving that for last. Oh, okay. But, but um, we don't yet have Wonder Woman pushed back yet. It's supposed it's to release inevitable. in December. It's inevitable. I don't know how they wouldn't push back. I mean, but they won't have one of the largest chains in America open. Exactly. That's part of it. <laughs> AMC on, Regal. or Regal has, also, has shut down yeah. Yeah, officially. And, um it's very sad, but and it's not. I mean, it's not. It, it makes sense. I don't. I'm not saying it's sad, but like sure. it, it makes sense, especially with the flu season coming up and COVID. You know, may possibly yeah. getting worse. We don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, um, Batman has been pushed now again from oct. It was supposed to come out uh, next year. Now it's or summer, I believe, next year. Now it's October of next year, and then now it is March of 2022. Yeah, it's sad. So it's like it feels like we have, we've lost the year of our lives, you know, in terms of in like movies, yeah, in movies and we stuff. Kind of have. No, yeah. it's it's in, weird. In, in games in some ways. Honestly, you know? we're lucky that games depend so much less on you going some that don't really depend on you going out of your house. If it weren't for video games right now, life would suck. Let's just be yeah. honest. And we've gotten lucky with TV because things were already shot previously. But we're running out of the barrel of things that well, thank, could be. Well, thank still goodness released. that um, Mandalorian is literally weeks away. And The Witcher apparently is still in full swing. They're releasing lots of production photos. Supposed to now. come out early next uh, year. Uh, I'm assuming is it early next year. Okay. Yeah, they, I, mean, I was thinking it was the end of the fall. It came so. out in I think January. I guess this year it was February. One of those. I think, I think it was January. It, maybe yeah. But we have Mandalorian and we have it, WandaVision. It, it, it started right at the end of Mandalorian. That's right. Yeah. Like, it, it, it bled up. It, yeah, it Mandalorian bled. steam. Yeah, and kind of continued on with that. So we have one division in the fall after Mandalorian, true, and then true. we have they just finished. They have to think like maybe a couple more days left for um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So that's going to okay. come out in um, probably early spring. Probably to spread out the love a little. No, you're right. The TV TV shows will say. It. I wonder. I mean, you all again. This when you start thinking about it, it sort of makes me think what will be what will be different about the industry. Like you, I could see so many more people getting into like producing TV versus movies just during this time because it's all you can do. That's, that's where the I can see a shift, a is. bigger shift even happening to TV to yeah, small screen. I can see it because of COVID. It's happening anyway on a 
some level, but I can see. I this. mean, we're already getting movies that were meant for screen. I've seen some music videos even come out like recently that are just all green screen music videos, and it's just you, you know it's a byproduct oh, yeah. of, of of social distancing for and sure, stuff. for sure. And they don't look bad. It's just you know it's interesting. We might have a certain aesthetic Everybody's for a couple of years. Out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, then of course we have the next year's timeline is Black Widow. Um, releasing in May, we have um, Shang Chi oh, well. and the Legend of the Ten Rings. I think in summertime, and now we also have. Um, Has that movie been shot? It's in it's in production. It's okay. in production, okay. and then we have the Eternals got pushed all the way back to November, a whole year back, which we, really sucks. We we would have been like really close to watching. Have they Eternals finished right. that shooting yet? It was finished like three months ago, four like months ago. Wrapped. Yeah, I mean, they were supposed to premiere November the, the this year. The only reason I'm asking is I've seen Camille Nanjiani like recently, and he still he still has a, a huge jet chiseled His, chin. It's it's it almost looks like a cartoon. Yeah, he in looks, a good way. Now, yeah. that's, I think it's, it's so like, interesting. It looks too perfect to be a real person. You know what I'm saying? It's really weird it, that it, he it's like every time so you different. look at him, it's just like, oh my god, I feel like his chin is 3D and everything else is 2D. You know what I'm saying? It's like jutting out of screen. <laughs> yeah. um, but I'm just saying, he's still jacked. So I was like, maybe they're still getting like pickups yeah. or something because he's keeping the bod. And yeah, during like, COVID, it's possible. It's very possible. Yeah. We do. We did have like some action figure leaks of the bad come out recently in the, last, in the in last week. And so I, do we know who it is? Yeah. Sorry. We we do it at large. I don't on top of my head because I don't know who it is. So oh, okay. like, I couldn't tell you on a comic level. So they're maybe a real deep cut. Yeah, sounds like it. Oh, um, but cuts. next December, which is also our topic of the day, is uh, Spider Man Three is coming uh, yeah. to theaters, and they're shooting in a couple we'll weeks see. in New York. Yeah, we'll probably see. some secondary principal front target. Sure. Probably getting some wide shots of New York. Well, which, I mean, it's probably real easy to find an empty street in New York, or much easier than it was. I guess we'll have some CGI characters walking around in that, <laughs> the low Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. But what's cool about this is that... Or maybe um, it's fucking set in, during the pandemic. Yeah. No, don't do it, Marvel. First don't. first things first. Let's just leave some investigative work here. Spider-Man 3 is coming out next fall. Yes. I'm right, supposedly. And and, and I, I think that one might keep its release date unless the other ones are bumped and therefore they feel like they need to wait to hold it off. But it's I feel special. like Spider-Man is contained enough story-wise where it won't be affected by the other three well, we movies. we don't know really, do we? We don't know. But here's what's interesting. And we've talked about this. Yeah. Um, we now know that Jamie Foxx is coming back as Electro. And from what we understand... But he's not blue. He's not blue, but we do think it's the same Electro from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It would seem silly for it not to be almost that he's playing the exact same character sure but think about jk simmons as a different j jonah sure. jameson no, but he's and, playing the same character that's my point he's yeah. a different version of that character he's not the same one from the toby Maguire universe correct i guess i don't how do we know <laughs> we know i mean jk simmons has come, he, well he's different universe he's come yeah and he's also come out in the last week said that they're it, the only thing that really separates it is his hair is missing and the only reason that even happened is because they had to shoot so quickly they couldn't put a wig on. That's so, hilarious. so now that's that's dictated that version, which is Just funny. Yeah, which is funny how that works out. Which is actually my only complaint about it. I wish he had his hair back. Yeah. Um, but so we have that. So it seems like, and Jamie Foxx tweeted out. Of course, it broke, broke out of the internet. He tweeted out an image saying like, "Hey, I'm basically coming back at coming back, Spidey kind of thing." And he he tweeted out an image of um. Or in, on Instagram of three different Spider Man and yeah. the blue version of him in the clouds. It was fan art. It was clearly fan art. But that's and it was that post has to get approved it is, by so well, many people. It was immediately taken down or removed after he posted. Then it didn't get approved by so many people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and of course that started stroking the fires. Of course. And as we've then done, you wonder is that purpose? It, yeah, you wonder. And then today's news um has been confirmed that Benedict Cumberbatch is coming back as Doctor Strange, right. which makes you think, okay. We've got a lot of evidence on the table now. We have evidence on the table. We've got Sam Raimi directing Doctor Strange of the Multiverse of Madness. Yes. Titled The Multiverse of Madness. Yes. Uh, which also another part of this, I think, maybe include is the fact that it's, it's now confirmed that Morbius has a direct MCU connection. I think someone else came out and said it something about it. Like, yes, this is in the MCU. Well, I mean, Michael Keaton's The Vulture is in the yes, trailer. Yes, but, but we, were, we were always still wondering, like, but how sure. does it connect in what but way? The, but the game, Spider-Man, is on the is the graffiti right. on the well, wall. 
I think that was just them. I wonder if they'll change. I wonder if they'll change. That'll that. change. That was just that was an asset they found. It was, was like, oh look, here's a high res version of Spider Man on the website. I guess we'll use this one. No one will know the difference. And we will. We do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'll get called out. Maybe, for that maybe shit. I'm wrong. Maybe they're intentionally including the game, which would be cool. I just don't. That would that, that would be that very cool. that would be very Sony though. Um, but man, I, I, yeah, you look at that. You look at what's going on with Multiverse of Madness. The fact that we know Scarlet Witch is going to be involved in that. And we know she's included in a lot of the multiverse. Well, we plots. know WandaVision is happening, and there's some a lot of different mul- I mean, some something's see, wrong, going wrong. There. You can see in the trailer it ain't normal life, which we haven't talked about. It broke records. It beat yeah. Infinity War, which I think is more of a testament of the times than anything. It, sure, and that, and yeah. the hunger that we have. This is the first year we haven't had a Marvel release. That's what I'm saying. Eight or That's nine what I'm years. saying. I think yeah. if this was a normal year, it probably gets normal numbers. Yeah, but um, I would see that. But yeah, it, it. Go on, give me more evidence. I guess. Okay, well. That on top of now Benedict being in Spider Man and it's, Jamie Foxx tweeting a picture with three Spider Man and the fact that he's coming from another, he's said I'm coming back as a character I was in a different established universe, which it feels like you don't do that unless you're doing it with intention. Yes, to, to do something specific with that idea on top of Michael Keaton. I mean, it feels like there's no way this isn't Spider Verse. Like, like if this all plays I'm out and it's smiling. not Spider, it's not Spider Verse. It's going to be kind of like, how did you make this without it being Spider-Verse with all of these spider verse things in it? Another thing is that we know that Marcus um, and Stephen McFeely, um, they've said that they would come back, and the Russos have said they would come back for one thing, and that is Secret Wars crossover, which is Which is connected to Spider-Verse. Like, it, it's, it's a multiple, it, multi-dimension kind of thing? It, 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 can, it has and can involve multiple versions of different characters coming together to take on a threat. So it sounds like what they're going to do is intro the whole multi-dimensional thing with Doctor Strange slash Scarlet Witch slash Spider-Man 3 and that leads us into the Secret Wars mass plot that will probably take another eight years to build to maybe very possible I mean like you. it seems like that's I mean you have things it like it feels almost like low hanging fruit like <laughs> you know what I'm saying like guys it's here's it's my there. response to what would happen if Tobey Maguire come back what you know like that's my thing because I'm that's my that's my jam you know, there's oh, yeah. Tobey Maguire Spider Man 2002 for and, up until recently, and even then, once I start talking about it, I'm going to yeah. change my mind. I have considered it my favorite movie of all time, in Back to the Future, um, and Spider Man One. Yes, Spider Man One. Just because it was uh, the t- formative. I was, I was seven years. Formative. You yeah. know, it was, and, it was a formative movie, and all, you know, all that stuff. The perfect time, perfect age, everything. Yeah, and um, that's true. So that's a big deal for me. And to see Tobey Maguire come back and basically get that Spider-Man 4 we never got in a different way, also mixed in with these MCU characters, mixed in with Tom Holland. Well, that's what I'm saying. If you've got the right Kevin Feige, which Marvel does, there's a way to do this. Marvel has the best Kevin Feige. (laughs) They do have the best (laughs) Kevin Feige. There's a way to do this where we get to revisit Sam Raimi Spider-Man, but it's what we remembered rather than what it is because you revisit those movies they, they, yes. they've aged poorly the combat is looks like power rangers to be honest mm. which at times like the punching that when it's sure action, maybe in spider-man one yes not spider-man two fair because they actually use a lot more cgi yes but in Spider-Man one when it's live action fighting it looks like spider it looks like power rangers and it at, at first i thought there's no way and i rewatched it, i was like oh my god it does it's it's weird because I remember his suit so much looks different. like a Power Ranger suit, it, like a villain. Yes, it Green does, Goblin does. It does. Uh, but 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 that to say is what well, we can get out of this. We can get not only the Spider Man four we deserve slash the Spider Man three we deserve. We can get the way we remembered those characters visualized in a modern sense. Yes, because how I remember Toby or sorry, uh, yes, Toby Maguire Spider Man right. is. A perfect incarnation of Peter, this like nerdy, awkward Peter Parker. He was the best like Peter Parker as not a good social person. It's kind of the opposite of what you saw in like the ni- the nineties cartoon show where Peter Parker was jacked and the his, most attractive his, person. His, like plaid on. shirt, yes. He's the most attractive person on the show. Uh, Wide as hell. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, but then he gets in the suit and he's like scrawny. You're like what the fuck? Yeah. How did that happen? Uh, but all that to say is, I feel like to me growing up. Tony McGuire was, was Peter Parker. Same. And to see that, but with fresh CGI, fresh like artwork on the suit and all these kinds of things, like 
I mean, there's one thing you can do, and I've I've, I've watched videos is you can go through Spider Man, the game, and you can play as the Tobey Maguire. Oh, I played with that suit, suit half the time, and it looks so good. It looks it's almost probably a higher quality model than what we got in the movies, the recent and, ones. Well, I mean, like, oh no, 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 in yeah, the yeah. old 2002, it's better CGI. Yeah, it's, that's that's yes, what I'm yes, saying. Yeah, it's just yeah. in a game, and sure. it looks good. I've always loved that suit, the shiny, the, the Spider-Man Two suit specifically, because it changed actually. Spider-Man I like one Spider-Man. 2. Yeah, I like all three of them, but the sp- second one has the gold threads. It has the it has the, the gold, shiny yeah, threads and yeah, stuff. Yeah. No, I remember actually watching first one silver threads. I yeah. owned Spider-Man Two on D. It was one of the like DVDs as a kid. I owned. I didn't own a lot. And I watched like the behind the scenes of that so many times, oh, like with them designing the suit and like yeah. them showing how they designed it and what they wanted to do with like, I loved all this. Oh, it's great. And just so that when there's smoke, there's fire, right? Yeah. And no, sorry. I do want to mention one of the things that I thought I've thought of that if they do this, I will crown them potentially Kings of crossovers. <laughs> So we know that Benedict Cumberbatch, what the, the rumor with that him coming too is that he is going to step into that Tony Stark role yes. as his mentor. As his mentor. Which, which, is, which, is our, which is funny. They have to comment that both mentors have like this mustache. Thing going and they right. hate each other. They like rivaled each other. Yeah. They couldn't stand each it's other. So inter- it's so but, interesting. But I mean, that's true. Marvel, Mar- Doctor Strange was a big character in Spider Man. Like he's always kind of been a big. Like Spider Man yeah. runs into Doctor Strange a lot. Yeah, I would say the, I would in, say this. Spider Man runs into everybody a lot. He's the glue in the, sure, in the, in guess, the Marvel universe. Yes, Doctor Strange is also stationed in New York. Yes, yeah, you're so right. you know, I mean, they, they, but almost all of them are yeah, stationed in New York. <laughs> there's, there's a big New York yeah. bias in comics. There is uh, Stanley. That <laughs> that all to say, here's how you break it and make it perfect. Is that in Spider Man PS4 two, Benedict Cumberbatch plays Doctor Strange as your mentor. And, and they and, make and, that and, another realm, a part of the Spider Verse. It's just the video game world. But Benedict Cumberbatch does mocap and actually plays himself as Doctor Strange. Oh, you're, in, oh, in you're saying game. like to make the game canon in the movie verse? Yes, and saying, gotcha. "Hey, this is another alternate reality." And Doctor Strange will just pop around helping lots of Spider Men. You know what I mean? He's just <laughs> he's just helping your friendly neighbors Spider Man everywhere you go. That'd be. I'm actually down for that. That'd be interesting. That'd be awesome. That would be cool. That, that he would, doesn't have to be in the whole game. Like make him appear in key moments and like. That's totally there. Or, or cool. have him mentor Miles Morales. Have Peter Parker die and him mentor Miles Morales. Ooh, I don't want Peter to die. Well, I just there's not enough room for two Spider Men. Yes, there is. Game. Trust me, know. there's enough know. comics to support that theory right there. Um, but here's the thing. My question is we know at the end of Far From Home spoilers that people know his identity now. Typically that's not a problem for most superheroes, especially in the MCU, because it's just not a problem. Um, decide not to make it. Yeah, problem. and Spider Man's one of the few characters that does have a secret identity, and um, it's always been an issue for Peter because, as it is for all superheroes, um, you don't want the people you care about to be hurt. Sure, right? Yeah, that's what he talks to Tony, Tony about in Homecoming, or yeah, Homecoming. Yeah, and so that, that that's the issue there. So now that was the big cliffhanger for an end of two. So you think, you know, there was always a kind of running gag or theory that it would be called homesick, which I just don't think would be possible. No, that doesn't sound good. It just, also, you don't want to associate don't the word Don't put the word sick, sick in your yeah, title. Exactly. No. But the idea behind no, that is that SEO. now he's been out of Spider-Man and he can't go home, right? Now he, which is symbolic to the other series, the sure. home thing. So that's the thing there. But now we have information that we're having multiple dimensions come in. We have all this other kind of stuff. How does that work into the plot? How do you have this Spider-Man who's been outed, but then also this Spider, potentially Spider-Verse thing? And it could be just they show up at the end. Who knows? I mean, there's tons of ways to do this. I mean, you could start off Spider-Man 3 picking up with, with Tom Holland, and he's let the fame go to his head a little bit. And now he's like this international rock star. And oh, so you're saying it's the opposite. Where he's not it. He's not been targeted. He's actually been uh, like... I mean, we have no context he, he, for which way they can He go goes the Iron Man route, basically. Yeah, that, that you I could even work that into his character, that he's kind of emulating Tony not... Part of, you know, Tony's not good characteristics. Wow. I didn't, I didn't, away, even, I didn't even think I mean? about him going the opposite. I thought it was just immediately trouble for him, is what I thought. I mean, it, it still is. I mean, but to me, that sure, I don't even whatever mean. the result of that will just be backdrop or setup. It will be our introduction to the new world, and then it might not really matter the rest of the time. Which is interesting because it's such a big cliffhanger and such, it's so important to the end of that movie. It is, but I think you can use it to really drive character development again, like. Pete, Tom, you know, Peter isn't good at handling the fame. He gets cocky. He, you know, he gets reckless. He, you know, it misuses the recognition and, and really lets that go to his head, which then becomes, which is for one, him trying to still deal with Tony's death and wanting him there and kind of acting like him 
and acting, well, acting like the, the Tony that was on TV kind of thing. And then it takes him or, you know, obviously the multiverse happens at some point. I could even see him butting heads initially with Dr. Strange. Like, it, you know, with Tony, he automatically, like there was a relationship there. He, like he already, he kind of submitted to Tony from the beginning. Like he was authority and I'll listen to what you say. I could see him butting heads with Dr. Strange at first because Dr. Strange doesn't, doesn't really like Tony. And here's Peter acting like Tony trying to be the next Tony. That's and interesting. Like, I've never he's thought like, about oh, this. You're, you know, you're hopeless or something. And then they go to a multiverse and they bond and they, and then by the end of it, Dr. Strange says, you know, you are like Tony, but just the good parts or something like that. That's the line at the end. Wow. Well, he that's, just, he that's, guys, you just got told the whole fucking, that's movie the right line there. that happens before he beats <laughs> the bad guy or, you know, do you think that, do you think that if they are Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are in this movie or just one of them, hopefully it's Tobey Maguire. have both. But maybe maybe it's just Andrew and they're saving Tobey for the multiverse of madness. That's the only acceptable way. If if it, Andrew if Tobey is in this, he has to be being saved. But what if the else. stinger is Doctor Strange and Tobey appear or Doctor Strange is going to get Tobey setting up multiverse of madness movie a, a year away. You know what I'm saying? Does that make is sense? Is multiverse going to happen after Spider-Man 3? Yes, which is kind of where I'm going at here. So I didn't like, realize that. So that's, that's the, this is such an interesting thing. I feel hmm. like they're not going to go balls to the wall with the multiverse stuff just because no, that movie's you're coming. You're probably right. You're probably right. I didn't for some reason I thought multiverse was happening first. Mm, no, that's, and, it, and also what's interesting well, that is that Wanda Vision is then happening before this. Then that's know? the plot. Then it's just him, it's him dealing with being the new Tony as far as popularity. He's got a fucking Iron Spider suit. I mean, he's the closest thing to a real real Tony that's well, left. Well, he he discards that suit by the end of the second. He wears a he makes he makes his own suit for the first time. Yeah, but he doesn't throw it away. He just leaves it at home. But he won't use that suit anymore. I guarantee. He'll have an upgraded version or something. He m- maybe it's like one of the best suits. He he might have the tentacle or the yeah, the, the, the spider arms. But he didn't in the new one. I, I like the new suit he made. I think that's like the best one. It's a great made. suit, but I he still got to put the iron spider on when things get real. <laughs> we'll see. Come maybe. on, it, it has instant if death they, mode. It, it has instant s- death side mode. Side note: If they do the iron spider, I would like a more comic accurate representation what was slightly different it's more yellow gold or gold red it's not like it's this. more like traditional iron man colors right yeah and it Rather feels it feels Spider-Man more like, colors. yeah it feels more like spider-man symbiote suit kind of aesthetic versus like actual armor like it still matches mm, the interesting patterns of the suit anyway i think that's all that to say here's yes. the, yeah, here's the plot is peter parker trying to be tony but in a bad way dr strange I guess trying to manage New York and post Tony being dead world. Peter causes issues with how he's handling things. Doctor Strange has to deal with him and they butt heads. Well, the thing with Matt, well, okay, well, how does Electro come into this? Does he jump? Is he jumping universes? Is Doctor Strange do something that brings Electro? Oh, no, that's interesting. That's what I'm saying. Because we yeah. know that's the two things, that's the three things we know is that. Here's how you do it Electro did. shows up and no one knows how the fucking he is. And Doctor Strange realizes somehow that he's not from this dimension and he has to figure out where the fuck this guy came from. Because okay. this, I can, I, like, you know, he's Doctor Strange. He can just tell, oh, this guy is, doesn't belong from this dimension. And of course, Electro will say something like, "You're, you're different. You're not my spy." Make, you make subtle references the whole movie about how he looks different. Or how now, he there's also the chance that this is a different version of Max Dillon. This is a new Electro, but it's just played by Jamie Fox, which, which, which would take that multiverse connection away a little bit because he says well, he's it, not blue, it, and it would just make it confusing. It would just make it like. Why did you cast the same actor in the same role, but he's not? Well, here's part of it, is that Kevin Feige, because there's this big Sony leak, right? That happened a long time ago when sure. we found out about the Aunt May potential movie, also the yeah. bullshit, which the end of this leak ended up kind of pushing more to Spidey going to the MCU. Right. In that leak, we found out that Sony was asking Kevin Feige at this time for notes on their movie, which is common. Sure. And Kevin Feige was kind of, um, you know, dishing on Andrew Garfield that like he's a whiner and his character's not consistent and everything else. But he did really gravitate towards Jamie Foxx's Electro. And he actually liked the character, which is funny because most people really don't. And not really saying it's Jamie I don't F- remember him being very... It's exact. not Jamie Foxx's fault. It's just that the material he was given and just, just the, the character was just really kind of like... I just remember like, him just being a bad guy. I don't remember anything else. He's just a guy who wants people to notice him. And of course, he gets a power that makes him... Un- not unnoticeable, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's, that's a really boring. Version. That's really his thing, and he's like, you know, he's he really his his whole thing is he just wanted a friend. That's really the whole thing. Oh my god! But Kevin Feige for some reason really liked this, and so that's that's a plot. What is that else? I mean, I feel like that's a plot that's in everything. Like the bad guy just was really yeah, just. Long I I have no idea. <laughs> um, but what's interesting about this again is, so we know that he's not blue, but you can always chalk that up to you can. He just he he's learned to control his powers. Or in this dimension, he's just not blue. 
in the other dimension he's blue, and this one he's yellow. It, but it's the same one. You're sure. saying, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could just be that oh, in this dimension I'm blue or not blue, and I don't yeah. know why. It's just a different dimension. But I could see a world where Spider Man is dealing with this electro. Doctor Strange is there as a mentor, and also kind of picking up picking up on the fact that the multiverse sure. is starting to bend a little bit. Sure. Maybe because the snapping of the thing. Thanos' fingers. That's got to be the ultimate reason. It's kind of yeah. it's kind of not helping things. Plus, Scarlet Witch doing her thing. On, and, well, and, and there's still some I think weird loopholes if you go back and really try to break down what happened with returning the Infinity Stones. I I, I feel like there's still some breaks in I mean, the fact that Loki stole one and they couldn't return that. Yeah. One. Well, his his theoretically his uh, series on Disney Plus will explain what happened with that stuff. That's what the whole thing's about, is that Loki. No, yeah, 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 I know, I know. But I'm assuming it doesn't just end up back where it was. Maybe, oh, maybe it does. Maybe that's yeah, the maybe his whole, end. maybe maybe that's just a one-off, and maybe that it's, is, that's it's his. him learning that I actually don't want this, and I'll put it back where it belongs. And then, which ends up sealing his fate as being killed by Thanos. True. Um, True. So it's like he's making a choice there. That could be an interesting character. Piece. Um, so, and of course, they may do multiple seasons, and it may, it may be a lot more complicated. I feel like it's Loki. gonna be hard to. That that's the only thing is I I don't see these big A list actors wanting to commit to like three and or I four kinda, seasons. I kind of hope show. they don't. I I kind of like the idea of these one offs. I I do too. I think you end up getting higher quality yeah. when you focus it on like one season. Yeah. Or, I'm okay like getting that. sequel seasons, but I would like the idea almost like a movie where we call Anthology. something different. Kind of like instead of calling it Falcon and the Winter Soldier, the next one's called Captain America and the Winter oh, Soldier sure, because sure, now he's sure. Captain America. Right. Um, I like that idea. I think that's something. There's some merit there. Um, instead of just calling it Mandalorian season two. And doesn't Loki something. have an offspring in the comics? Um, I'm sure. Like he a does. daughter or son. Or he something? ends up becoming a girl at one point. Like he changes to a girl at one point. But that's he's it. kind of just a magical being that can turn. I mean, his thing right? in the lore of whatever is he birds. I think a wolf or something, or he's like the father of a wolf. Yeah, no, he's the yeah he's the father of some mythological creature. Yeah, I think a wolf that ends up trying to kill Thor or eats Thor. Is that not the wolf in Ragnarok? That's what I'm thinking. Oh. I think that was the wolf. That's supposed to be the wolf. Yeah. Yeah. So then yeah. I guess they didn't do anything with yeah. that. But anyway, that's my thing. So this may be like a so, a subtle, we're getting into the multiverse stuff. And then, of course, now that they do that, then the multiverse of madness will sure. maybe bring in Tobey Maguire. I can see them being assholes in a great way. And at the end of teasing it in Spidey 3, multiverse, you see Tobey Maguire turn around and, this, and, and it's like, that's Tobey Maguire. Or you, have a, in, or you have a stinger and you think it's Tom Holland the whole time. Be in the Spidey suit, and then you're just seeing it in shadows, and then it's Toby. Exactly, and then that but of course sets or, up, and you th- it maybe have it pick up right off a of previous. So it's like they're mirroring each other, like sure. they're going through the same things almost, but like in different ways. Yeah, I that'd think. be great. And then you, of course you have Multiverse of Madness, which you feel like if they're going to do that, then of course they're going to bring in them all back for the Secret Wars movie, which is basically all but confirmed at this point. It feels like it, yeah. Um, and the other thing too, you know, like there's even been rumor that Tom Cruise would come in to play Tony Stark because he was originally as, he was, a, as an alternate version because he was originally supposed or you know yeah they wanted him at first yeah they wanted him at first and they would bring him in for an alternate. I could version. see him being as a I could see him being a good alt alt version. I would love it if Robert Downey Jr. come back, but it was an evil version, or if Tom Cruise played an evil version of Tony Stark. I, I yeah I think Tom, Tom Cruise can could do that well. What a, what an interesting concept that if you bring back Tony Stark, but it's the evil version, and you have to bring back that's the OG very version. Very classic comics. It's bring- like the that's the most classic way you bring a character back is, oh they're alive again, but they're evil until they're not, and we yeah. figure it out. But there's something interesting there. Maybe you no, think Tom Cruise Tony Stark is cool because we're supposed to think Tony Stark is always right. a good guy. Right. Turns out he's not, and the only way that can stop Tony Stark is Tony Stark. There's something about that. That just sounds like a standalone movie, though, too. I mean, I feel like that sure. needs a, old, its own movie. It feels like, it, yeah, but it could feel like that could be the the end or something of Secret Wars. Of course, mm-hmm. I really think mm-hmm. the Fantastic Four are really going to be heavily involved in Secret Wars. To me, it's the perfect do, way to do Fantastic Four and X-Men. It's the perfect way to introduce them without retconning things. Well, I think, see, I think X-Men might be a byproduct of Secret Wars afterwards, like the yeah. new universe. Oh, you think Fantastic, Fantastic Four will be a part of... I they think, will get introduced during this arc. I think it's it's highly possible that Reed Richards might be the main protagonist of Secret Wars. Very possible. Is that comic the, the last big Secret Wars was Reed Richards versus It better Dr. be, Dude. and it better be motherfucking John Krasinski. Because at this point, anyone else but will disappoint me. Here's another thing. You know, one of the people that auditioned for Captain America was John Krasinski. And there's a great deep fake out there. So what if John Krasinski is also Captain America in Secret Wars? He's played both. He would be a good old Captain America. And the footage looks like they just shot John Krasinski in the suit. It's how good the deep fake is. But 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah. What if he plays Mr. Fantastic? I could see him doing, but, and also Captain America as a different version. And then you have, and then you have fucking Chris Evans not only as Old Cap, but also as the Fantastic Four Human Torch. In this, that then in it this, just starts getting confusing. I love it, and as a fanboy, but as a and to be honest, that's just a con- motherfucking and convoluted then, plot. And then you have Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds, and somehow they get Green Lantern. But then you get both <laughs> versions of Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds. You get the stupid one from X Men Origins, yeah. where he's this fucking monster at the end, and then the Ryan Reynolds version. You get both, and you get both Wolverines. Which means, of course, you would have to bring back Hugh Jackman, Hugh Jackman to yeah. be in the Secret Wars. No, movie. To me. Hugh Jackman is would be the that would be the biggest thing they could do for me for yeah. the Secret Wars is bringing Hugh Jackman Wolverine even more it. so than like bringing back Robert Downey Jr. Yes, because we've so. seen Robert. We've 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 had Robert sure for ten years and it's amazing. But I want to see fucking Hugh Jackman Man, that as would. Wolverine in an Avengers style giant battle, one continuous shot. Like like think of the shot from Endgame where you're flying through and it's just. Hype on hype. It's Hulk coming can through, you, and then can you imagine? But then it's fucking Wolverine flying in with his like claws out. And he's like got this ridiculous look, and he just like doing that classic like just slicing up. Yeah. He's like that. Can you imagine Deadpool, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, Tobey Maguire, Spider Man, Robert Downey Jr., Iron Man, Chris Evans? You know what I'm saying? Like I can't. Can you in like in a bet in a good? H- way. Here's how the thing. I ask myself, how can they ever top end game? And that may be the answer. I think to me that is the that's the only answer. You get you bring in a solid Which DC is fantastic tr- forecast uh, that I, helps be a part of And I've of been this saying this, thing. you know I've been saying this for a long time, is that DC's answer to fixing their universe and also getting a leg up on Marvel yeah. is to do like a multiverse situation. And they're doing this. They with, are, but here's the thing if Marvel's is basically a twenty year build up based on no, two no. giants, there's sagas, no way they can compete with Marvel no. at this point. No, but it's still an avenue is, for yeah. DC to take, and it's a smart sure. one. It is. No, I'm. I, I I can't get out of my head doing the classic like Hulk throwing Wolverine, like that's Whoa. a classic comic move. Is he Wolverine sticks his claws out and Hulk just throws? I'm him. still telling. You, there's something I still saw that Ant, it was supposed to happen in Endgame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Ant Man throws or throws the Hulk, and the Hulk throws Spider Man. I love it. What? That's the that's ultimate. how they should have done the whole gauntlet get across the thing. That's a that's probably what that was for. That, that was. is that's one of those things like that's when such you such a comic. When thing. you hear, it, you're like, that's the most brilliant goddamn thing I've ever heard in it my was life. The most comic-y thing in, in, in a good so, way. They, you know, you know they've say, they went. You know what? We're going to save that for something else. And you bet your fucking ass they're going to use that in a movie. And he, I, I still think that I still think they could do a version of that. That's he throws Hulk, who throws Hugh Jack Wolverine, because uh-huh. Wolverine's the that's the day you're throwing a fucking knife. Oh at yeah, that point you know what I'm saying? Like the a, momentum you're throwing an invincible person <laughs> that has knives for hands. At yeah. anything. you uh-huh. know what I mean? Like that's, of course, there's also Ant Man three. The announced the villain, or they, it's been like basically. All oh really? Announced. I didn't know. Who's that? And it's um uh I can't think of Annihilus. Who's a huge Avengers villain, which is for the Annihilation um, wave or whatever. The big arc was Avengers Annihilation. And he is like, well, he's that, considered up there with Thanos kind well, of villain. Here's the thing. We're, we're going to have to have Avengers movies before we get to Secret Wars. We're good. Because you think about, you think about the Infinity Saga. We had, a, we had Avengers. That was basically the cap of a one arc. Right. Avengers Age of Ultron. That was another like culmination of several movies. And then Infinity War Endgame. So we're still going to need those kind of phase one culmination movie, phase two culmination movie before we get to what you would assume is the giant secret wars doubleheader movie, right? Yeah. So we're going to need villains that connect to that multiverse thing, but that are that could stand alone, just like we had with the Avengers films. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that I would feel like bringing in someone like him, hey, that could be someone maybe we're fighting at the end of phase one. Yeah. Or phase two. Maybe that's that's our Loki or that's our Ultron this time. I can see that. You know what I mean? What's interesting also is that um I just kinda get a little sad thinking about it is that Chadwick Boseman's gone, you know, and um, They're gonna have to address it. I mean there's yeah. a there's always been heavy speculation that they've already decided that they're gonna give it to Shuri um instead the of other recasting. Rumor I heard was somehow bringing back Killmonger. Which I think is a pretty pretty as smart. a as a as a good guy. Yeah, he comes back from. I mean, dead. I, to me, Michael B. Jordan is maybe one of the only actors that could like, like I would accept him as a different Black Panther. 
Yeah, I think I because of his role in Black Panther one, but also just his caliber of actor, he's also one and of the then, only, And then Michael B. Jordan you know, could play those. Fantastic Four version, Human Torch. Just don't do that now. No, let's just pretend that it didn't exist. <laughs> but I, you know, I recently saw that director dunking on that writer dunking on himself. He said there was some kind of joke. Oh, he was like, yeah, the writer. This is a horrible written thing, and I wrote Fantastic Four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But no, that's uh, anyway. That's oh, uh, yeah. I don't know how they're going to address the Black Panther thing. I, that's 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 a tricky one. That's, they're just know. they're going to have. Do you to think let, they should recast it? Are you okay them recasting? No, they don't need to. Re- they need to. They need to. They need to let him die in canon. But how and, they, and how have you grieve the, with him? How are they going to do this? They're smart enough to figure it out. They they're, they're off just, camera. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe maybe you have some old footage that you could potentially use. Uh, it seems like every move. I mean, the, thinking of Star Wars and and. Uh, Carrie Fisher, it seems like they have ridiculous amounts of footage that just was sitting there. Would you be okay if they actually, like, basically almost like deep fake Chadwick Boseman for a new scene for (sighs) him to die? I mean, if it's his real face, his real voice, maybe that's fine. Um, I think there's a way to do it. But what they've got to do is is it's got to be a moment of grief in the movie. So it's got to be us grieving with the characters in the movie grieving and kind of address it that way. So it can kind of be this... Not only is it a plot point that you have to figure out, but it's also kind of this monument to the character. Like it makes me think of, um, in fact, I know you haven't gotten here, but West Wing, when right. one of the key characters dies in the middle of the season. And it, this is the final season, and there are like four or five episodes left, and he dies. And so they wrote it into the script of him dying. And there's like an entire episode that's just like kind of processing grief about this character because he was such a central character to the show, but it works because, and even watching it years later, it's like, wow, this feels like, this feels like more important than just an episode. This almost feels like this episode really is encapsulating that moment of grief for everyone. Like these are probably real tears by his castmates. They're not, they're not having to fake grief here. Yeah. I mean, you wonder also, you know, you know, they've written the movie or they've just got the, the baseline draft of it because it, that movie yeah. will affect well, other Ryan things Cooper down the Well, Ryan Coogler talked about having, a, like, working on lines recently or, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you wonder, it's just, it's fascinating and, and there's going to be a lot, we're going to talk about it a lot. We're going to analyze it whenever the movie comes out and how it fits into the MCU, how it was going to fit right. into the MCU. Right. Um, it's just, man, it's, it's sad because I mean, he was one of the most exciting characters for me going into even the next yeah. phase. Cause we got him right at the end. I did watch it when, after the day after he passed, just as I was working on stuff, I put it on the background and just listening to the music. It's one of those things like you're watching it and you're like, I, I forgot and you know how amazing that movie was truly. Yeah. It, it is, it, it is its own flavor of Marvel movie in a way that feels really good. Yeah. And, it, and just the cultural impact is, and it's just, I, to it's me, you another can feel level. It. I mean, it really does feel good to be seeing these like African inspired worlds and That's cultures. Great. And That's like, great. it just feels like this feels real. This feels like authentic representation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're mm-hmm. not having to force this. This is like, you know, we're, I, and I love the fact that it's like one of the most powerful countries in the world is this African country that no one would give, you know, a second thought to. I think that's really fun. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I think they have, a mountain in head of in front of them to deal with this. I think the best thing they can do is be raw, you know, allow them, allow the emotion. You don't feel like you have to paper over it or rush through it. Like yeah. sit with it, let the audience sit with it in the moment. We still have big but, characters left, but you kind of wonder like to me, he was almost like top two, top three, top one was, heavy he hitter. No, and Cause he, we lost the big three. Or, it, or we, we still have Thor, we still have Thor, but we have Spider-Man who's of course huge. But Doctor he's kind of Strange. retroactively bigger now. Like he, he wasn't a part of the main four. No, right? you're like, you're the, right. The I'm saying like four, you know, five. Black Widow's gone. We Hulk, we assume Hulk's gonna be in the She Hulk TV show. Sure, sure. And we also you know no Mark one, Revelo doesn't seem like he's a lot else to do anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're right. And there's no <laughs> I and, can see him playing this role I just, forever. I don't care what people tell me. I, I really plugged in. I just don't think people really gravitate towards Captain Marvel. Like I think as a whole, people no, really don't like. No, I think she, part of it is just her her actual off camera personality. And I just think that people it comes are, through in camera a little bit. It feels like it feels like you're like, oh yeah, she does seem that way and on camera. Yeah, she heard she doesn't life. seem very. She seems a little kind of bitchy. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. She seems a little demanding. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, it's um, interesting. So I and but it made a billion dollars. So maybe we'll get a sequel. I don't know. And we're gonna get a sequel. I wonder if it might be. Well, you know, her, her name's Angela Rambo, the little the little girl that's in Captain Marvel. Oh. The, the daughter of yeah, yeah, the, the other her, person, her best yeah. friend. She is the girl, the, the, the black lady that's in WandaVision that falls on the ground as an adult. Interesting. 
So she's in that as an Interesting. Adult. So that might be an avenue they take with Captain Marvel, giving her the power set or something. But sure. um, I don't know. It's interesting with the state of the MCU is and who's going to come out. Of course, we have Shang-Chi. The Eternals are coming. The Eternals are going to be a big part. We've got a fucking um, Nick uh, Nick Cage. Nick Fury. Nick Fury, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, Nick uh, Fury. God, give me the Nick Cage announced. MCU movie. Yeah. Yeah, we have that. No, now, yeah, dude, I seriously, guess, give me the Nick Cage MCU, movie. which will be interesting. And then we have, which I never thought we was going to get actually. And then I, mean, I guess they're just like, well, it worked on the first one. We'll just de-age him again. I guess so. Yeah. And then you have, of course, the Eternals happening. Um, yep. Shane Chi's a new character. Yep. Um, and then we have Ant Man and the Wasp three coming, which might just kind of expand the universe a little bit more. Sure. And then we have um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, which I always forget. You know that that's, that's the one that is probably top of my list of anticipations. Yeah, and so that'll be, that that's a little farther down the road. They might might start shooting next fall. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I could see that potentially happening. Um, but anyway, it's it's an interesting time, and I kind of wonder it where is. we're going because then also there's all those movies. But then you got to wonder there's got to be an Avengers movie eventually, and also there's got to be sequels to these movies. And before the TV the shows sequel. are all going to play into it. Yeah, and and advance. I mean, we know that the we plot have, will be seriously advanced in the TV show. We have, aren't going to be side stories. Yeah. going to be. We have Moon Knight. We have She Hulk. We have yeah. Miss Marvel. We have yeah. um, Falcon Winter Soldier. Which they confirmed Logan. the actors for Miss Marvel recently. They did, yeah. yeah. I she, can't... she looks very much like Miss Marvel in the game. Yeah. And I'm assuming it's because that character got a lot of love. Like, that was one of the things people actually liked about, you know, Crystal Dynamics Avengers game. I think or the people mo- liked the story. The thing they too. liked the most about it, the story, was her. Yes. Yeah, they because liked... they liked her story. They didn't love how, like, they crammed these, like, Iron Man quests stories into it sure. that felt unnatural but they liked her gotcha. and liked her character so i have no doubt that inspired them to pick someone that's very closely uh she looks a lot like the character they have in the game yeah which you know and i think that's another another example of proper re- representation you know what i mean and finding a character that is you know middle eastern descent and actually picking someone that's middle eastern descent for it. it's like yeah no, that's, that's great they should, they should do that um what do you think also about Keanu Reeves being Moon Knight. That's not confirmed. It's not confirmed, but it's heavily rumored. I guess I don't know enough about Moon Knight to know if that fits for kind of Keanu Reeves' delivery because he's he's a little bit one note in his delivery. That's my my kind of biggest criticism yeah. is he kind of says everything at the same energy level. Almost. Moon Knight is a schizophrenic guy who basically emulates other people's power. Yeah, right. No, I know he's kind of. There's also Daniel Radcliffe up for like. See, that makes more sense that, to me. That would match. Moon Knight. I mean, because he's played some pretty ridiculous roles he's, since Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. In a good way. Like, and he's yeah, a good, I love them all. He's proved that he's a good actor beyond yeah, being Harry is. Potter. It's fascinating. We have a lot of Marvel coming on the corner. I think we've just, a lot of fun we've, had, we've had a drought for a while. We have. On t- I guess we also have a new Black Widow coming too. It makes sense. Pass on the Mantle. And a new Hawkeye True. TV show, which are Pass on the Mantle on there too. Yeah. So True. we have a lot of, um, we have a lot on the corner. I think part of it is that we can't envision the future of the Avengers because we haven't seen these new Avengers yet. Sure. Um, I think the hard part to me is that we would already be getting a lot of notes of, we would already probably know where a lot of the stuff was going at this point, just on the movies that would have come out by now. Yeah. We we at this point we would have had black widow eternals around the corner. Scarlet, Witch should have been out earlier, right? I'm not sure on what captain, day. captain America, that Mar- captain America would be coming out like this month, basically. Right. 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 We would have, um, yeah, those three things. And we would have, uh, I think that's it. This but year. you got to think, having all that, we probably would have we would have a lot more idea. Well, on top of, of trailers for One Division on for Loki, true, true. and um, true, you know, more all announcements those, and all those. Honestly, I'm thinking about the in teasers that we would get throughout all those that would be pointing us to whatever exactly. big that's exactly. Next. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, they're being tight lipped as they should because no one wants to put put a date on. And, and you know, honestly, sorry, everyone does, but they don't want to like really put a date on. Sure, it. I do almost wonder if this is benefiting Marvel in the long run, being that taking a break. Almost. Yes. And it, it, it's enforced on them so no one can get mad at them. But we're almost going to have like two years between like the last Marvel movie and like the next one. And, and really the last one was ending the pre, it was kind of like the prologue to the, to the Infinity Saga. Yeah. I mean, and then the first you know true saying? character with new one will get will be Shang-Chi next summer. Right. And so I think, but we are getting four next year, which feels good. Like in terms of audience fatigue and just interest in superhero movies, this may end up being working out for them having to take almost a two year break. Yeah, maybe. Well, I, I know that we got some good stuff around the corner, and of course, we're going to be um, tracking it as it as it oh, goes. Yeah. Fun Marvel conversations will be had. Yeah, how can our listeners write into us, Daniel? They can write into bit.ly slash two four one mail. There, I would love to hear your theories on what Secret Wars might be. What just the next 
saga of MCU could be. Um, if you think we're on the right track with any of these ideas, if you think I've nailed the Spider-Man 3 plot, which I think I'm kind of close, if I'm honest, I'd love to hear your opinions about all that and whatever else you want to say. bit.ly slash 241mail. And of course, if you don't want to write into that, you can always comment below on the YouTube channel, which is where we always recommend people watch the actual content. And I can't stress this enough. We have a lot of original things coming around the corner. It's very, very close. I would even argue, say, that it is probably going to launch in November. And um, that would be my... I think that's safe. I have a very safe suspicion it's going, safe. To, it's going to happen. Yeah. And um, it's it's good stuff. And I think if you enjoy the things we talk about on here, you're going to enjoy that content as well. If you enjoy cool nerd shit, stay tuned. Exactly. Yeah. And of course, go to podcast241.com for a link to all the podcasts, either on podcast services or, of course, to the YouTube channel. And of course, there's also links where you can follow us on all of our social media um, outlets. And of course, doing all that kind of stuff really, really helps us. And um, get this yeah. out there and you know, we, we, we want to keep doing this kind of stuff and hopefully, um, and, and you know, keep doing it. Yeah. And seriously, we, I mean, our show is discussion based. We want you to be a part of that. Send Absolutely. us questions, send us topics. If you've got an idea for a topic, we'll cover it. Um, now if it sucks, we may cover it for like 30 seconds, but you know, we'll <laughs> cover it. You know, <laughs> technically we'll do what we said. Uh, but you know, I want to be able to have conversations with our community, uh, however, however large that word entails, but yeah, tight family community. Like we will respond, and we will either whether it's YouTube comments or you again give us a topic, give us something it, that that honestly sounds fun. You to give us something to talk about that wouldn't necessarily naturally come to us. Um, let us know. Yeah, yeah tli slash two four one mail. Yeah, I'm always down for discussion. Anyway, thank you guys again for watching. My name is Donovan Thompson. I'm Daniel Wingfield, and we 